In an OHB system clean room in Bremen, Germany, a small geo platform is being assembled and tested. It will carry the second node of the European Data Relay System, EDRSC. The first node, EDRSA, was launched as a hosted payload on board a UTELSAT satellite in 2016, making EDRSC the first ever dedicated EDRS satellite. Like EDRSA, EDRSC is destined for geostationary orbit, where it will use a laser link to communicate with low Earth orbiting satellites, over which they can transmit their data to EDRSC. The EDRS node then sends this data to Earth. The two-way inter-satellite link can also be used to send commands up to the low Earth orbiting satellites. EDRS is the European Data Relay System and it essentially uh, solves a problem that many low Earth orbiting satellites have, which is that they only ever see their own ground station around about once every orbit for 10 minutes out of 90 minutes. And therefore, before the actual data is at the end user in Europe, it takes several hours normally. We did realize we can cut this down to 10, 20 minutes maybe by relaying the data via an EDRS payload directly to the ground. One of the main components of the EDRSC satellite is the laser communication terminal. This innovative piece of technology is used for communication with the low Earth orbiting satellites, which are also equipped with the same technology. The use of laser communication allows for high data rates up to 1800 megabits per second. But laser communication is not without its challenges. So EDRC challenges are first pointing accuracy because we have to aim at the right spacecraft which is some 40,000 kilometers away and it is also uh, stability because we have to keep the link for the time it takes to upload the information which takes some 10 minutes. The first satellites to use the EDRS technology will be the European Copernicus constellation. This will result in near real-time data transmission for the Sentinel-1 and 2 satellites. Another EDRS customer will be the ISS or International Space Station. This innovative system is the result of a public-private partnership between ESA and Airbus Defence and Space, in which ESA and Airbus have jointly developed the infrastructure and Airbus will operate the service. The two EDRSA and C nodes will provide this service to Europe from their stationary vantage points over the continent. If you want to have a truly global system, you need more EDRS payloads spaced all over the geostationary arc, all over the circle. So one of the natural future developments which we're following up at the moment is called Globenet. And Globenet will add a third node to EDRSA and EDRSC, which will be called EDRSD. This is very likely going to be located over the Asia-Pacific region, somewhere over Japan. By building a truly global system with Globenet, ESA and Airbus aim to expand the user side of EDRS, attracting more and new customers. Meanwhile, ESA will continue to enhance optical data capabilities with even higher data rates and design more efficient and compact laser communication terminals. The launch of EDRSC is only the beginning in the construction of the Space Data Highway.